Hello everybody. Um, I'm moving on with the categories of verbal abuse from the book The Verbally Abusive Relationship by Patricia Evans. Um, category number 10, threatening. Threatening manipulates the partner by bringing up her greatest fears. Verbally abusive threats usually involve the threat of loss or pain. Some examples follow. Do what I want or I'll leave. Do what I want or I'll take a mistress. Do what I want or I'll get a divorce. Do what I want or I'll really be angry. Do what I want or I'll hit you. Or if you fill in the blank, I will fill in the blank. Um, threatening is probably... Um, I would say it's still, uh, I would say that's more in the, the overt category of verbal abuse because they're outright giving you a threat, giving you an ultimatum. You give me my way or I'm going to inflict this punishment on you. Now, don't get me wrong. I'm not talking about like when you catch the narcissist in a lie or you catch them doing something wrong. And you're discussing their bad behavior and how it needs to stop. And um, let's say um, you think they may be cheating on you. And you say something like, if I find out you're cheating on me, I'm going to get a divorce. Or if you say, um, if you don't stop exploding at me in front of the kids and calling me names, I'm going to leave. That is not abusive threatening like she's talking about here. You're not trying to manipulate them. You are merely stating where you stand in the relationship. These are my terms. This is my deal breaker. But when they are basically trying to manipulate you and it's basically like You've got to think of their inner child. Their inner child is in charge. We all have an inner child. But in there, you think of your inner self as your house. It's your house. You decide who you let in your house. And what's going on in their house is the five-year-old is in charge. That's basically a narcissist. And so when they give you these threats, you do what I want, or I'll divorce you, or I'll cheat on you, or whatever the, the threat is, fill in the blank as appropriate for your narcissist. Um, when they're doing this, it's basically their inner child saying, I want my way, and I want it now, and if you don't give me my way, I'm going to punish you by blankety blank. Sometimes it's just throwing a temper tantrum. That is the method that my narcissist used most. He would throw temper tantrums. And please understand, although sometimes it could be comical, and sometimes the kids and I would just really just sit there with our mouths open, like staring at him, like, what are you doing? Because it's really disturbing when you're watching a full-grown man. Um, he's he's 42 now, and I mean, when this was happening, especially when the kids were younger, when they were small, and it really frightened them. You know, they were the little kids, and he was like this 30-something-year-old man stomping through the house like a child, like a toddler, like even the children in my house were staring at him like, dude, what the fuck? What the fuck are you doing? Like they were looking at him like that. Like in that moment, our children were more mature than he was. But it's very scary when you're de dealing with a narcissist like my husband, because he's physically very intimidating. So picture um, a five-year-old temper tantrum, five-year-old mentality, but in a six-foot-three, 
60-something, 270-pound body stomping and flailing through the house, yelling and screaming and at, at the top of his lungs and blaming everybody for things that happened that weren't anybody's fault or, or something that happened that was actually his fault. Um, like when he left his guitar sitting out, his Les Paul guitar, very expensive guitar, was worth a lot of money. He got it a, a, a good deal on it, and it, it was a lot more valuable than what he paid for it, and he wanted to keep it nice, and he left it out, leaning up against his desk, not on a stand, not in a case, just sitting out, leaning against his desk very unstable so at the time our daughter was like about a year old maybe a little over a year and she was a toddler she was toddling around the house and she was a very curious child whatever she could get into she got into and I don't even know if she touched it intentionally or if she was just walking in that room and accidentally brushed up against it because that would happen all the time he would leave the guitar leaning up against the desk and you would be like walking by or something and you would barely touch it and it would fall over and crash to the ground. So apparently something happened. He left the guitar out. She accidentally tipped it over and it broke and he had a fit about it. And it was like, and he's yelling at the kids, who did this? He walks out with the broken guitar and yells at the kids. Who did this? And, you know, it. they're just looking at him like they didn't understand, you know. And I'm thinking, you left it sitting out. Why would you leave an expensive guitar sitting out when we have a toddler roaming through the house getting into everything? It was just, it was things like that. And it was very intimidating when he when he would do it really intimidated everybody it made the kids afraid of him and um so a lot of times just his demeanor was threat enough like it caused like this general aura of unease in the house because everybody got the message after a few of these tantrums the kids got the message very quickly that if I do something displeasing to dad, he's going to get really scary and turn into scary dad. And it really affect, affected them negatively and made them very afraid of him. You know, in the end, his behavior was so erratic when he was on the drugs. They would flinch when he would walk in the room, even if they weren't doing anything wrong. They were just playing, just doing normal kid shit, just being kids and weren't even doing anything wrong. And they would like stop and freeze like when he'd walk in the room because just like you have a few of those tantrums and once that precedent gets established, you've always got that threat. So sometimes they don't even have to verbally threaten you. It's just their general aura that they put out causes the walking on eggshells phenomenon that you start it, and it happens a lot of the time it happens unconsciously and that's when you really start altering your behavior to avoid whatever the threat is that you feel is coming whether it's a verbal explosion or um a general just tantrum five-year-old type tantrum I've seen him stomp through the house, pick up things and throw them to the ground, break things, um, you know, just really irrational behavior. Um, some of the verbal threats that I would get from my narcissist were that if I didn't initiate sex more, if I didn't get hornier, if I wasn't as horny as him, and basically think about sex round the clock, 24-7, that he was going to get a girlfriend. And at first, I would really get anxious about this. Like, it would really upset me when he would say that. And so I would. that's when I started, like, giving him sex whenever he wanted it, even if I really didn't want to have sex. 
because I, I was so scared. Like, that was my big fear. I didn't want him cheating on me. And let me tell you, in the end, I really didn't even give a shit. I almost hoped that he had a girlfriend because I was just so sick of his bullshit and the five-year-old temper tantrums when he didn't get his way. That's basically what it is. They don't get their way. They're going to have a tantrum. And that's what mine would do. He would tantrum just like a child and scare the hell out of everybody in the house. Um, another one I would get that is if I left him. Now, sometimes, keep in mind, he would threaten me sometimes that if I didn't give him what he wanted, if I didn't give him sex when he wanted, he was going to leave or he was going to get a girlfriend. Um, another one I would get is that if I left him, that he would quit his job. He, I, he would tell me, I hope you like being a single parent because I'm going to quit my job and then get a job where I can get paid cash under the table so that you can't have any of my paycheck and you won't get child support. That's also a popular tactic of the, of the narcissist um, because, of course, it doesn't matter if you're married and you have children together and you have community property and a common household. It's their money. What's, what's theirs is theirs and what's yours is theirs. That's how the narcissist brain works. It's all about them. Even when I confronted my husband about the two thousand plus dollars that he was withdrawing from ATMs all over the city and spending primarily on opiates and uh primarily on opiates, some of it on gambling and um I got told it's my money, so yeah. If you lay down the law and tell the narcissist you're uh, crossing the line here, you're breaking some of the deal breakers I told you about, you know, remember? And, um, yeah, that's what they'll threaten you with. It's my money. I can do what I want with, with it. And if you leave me, you're not going to get any of it. And that is threatening. Um, I welcome any of you to leave comments below about um, any of the threats that you've received from your narcissist. And I thank you once again for listening. Good night.